Hey everybody, welcome to another model building workshop. I'm Mr. Allen, coming to you of my basement workshop here in Providence, Rhode Island, on behalf of the Community Libraries of Providence. And this is part two of the, uh, the World War II Allied Female Soldiers set. Uh, so last time we were doing the assembly, and now I'm going to show you where I am in the painting of these figures. So we had the four figures, two American, and two from the United Kingdom that were in this set from uh, Bronco Models. And if you recall, we had the assembly and painting instructions on the back of the box, which is kind of typical for a lot of these uh, figure sets, like Tamiya and, and others do this. So let's have a look at uh, where, where I am now. I was hoping to be completely finished with these, uh, but... <laughs> You know, due to the deadline, <laughs> I'm not quite, not quite there, but I'm, I'm very close. So let me get the guide here. That's what we're looking at. So this is the British ATS Royal Artillery 1940 figure. Let's see if I can get that so you can see it. Yeah, I know this isn't really the best camera for these kind of videos, but it's what we've got. What I'm working with. So I still have some more detail to do on these faces. Now I am not a uh, particularly great figure painter. <laughs> so, you know, I do what I can. And I'm trying to work on getting faces better. So I'm still working on the faces. I think the uniform is pretty much where I want it to be. And I suppose I could try to get some highlights on there. So that's that one. Whoops, as I drop her <laughs> dangerously to the ground. <laughs> this is the Women's Auxiliary Volunteer Service, 1942. The Waves, United States, Navy. So this is a dark navy blue. But you could reverse these colors and do this uh, with a white summer uniform. And I'll show you that in the book. I think I showed you that in the last episode, but in case you missed the last one, I'll give you a peek. Now, I painted these primarily with Tamiya acrylic paints. That's been my go-to for a long time. Kind of working my way into some other types of paints. Uh... You know, recently, like uh, Life Color and uh, Model Color, you know, Vallejo. I'm trying to do some other stuff, too. Um, Model Master has been, been one I've used quite a bit as well over the years. Still still do. And then occasionally we'll get some of these ancient Pactra paints, <laughs> believe it or not. Um, occasionally I'll use some of those, too. So I have a pretty wide variety of things I'm working with here. This is the leading aircraft woman from the RAF in 1940. Again, still working on all of the facial and, uh, well, basically the flesh tones. And I don't know how well you're going to pick that up on, on this camera. And there's some details that are just a little too tiny for me to really get at. You know, because on the sleeves there, try to imply that there's emblems there, but they're so tiny. And lastly, I got the Women's Army Corps, U.S. Women's Army Corps, 1944. Now, keep in mind for the legs that they're all wearing stockings. Need some more touch ups. So that's how that one came out. And again, I'm still playing around with these and I try to do some other touch ups to them, but, but that's where we are at this moment. And let me grab ugh, as I disappear from view. <laughs> I should set this up so the book is not so far 
<laughs> below the camera here. <laughs> but anyway, this is a very small space, as I've mentioned that before in previous episodes. But this was my uh, my guide here. It's the uh, women in uniform from the Militaria series, 1939 to 45, by Histoire and Collections. I, I love these uh, these books from this uh, this company because they publish some really great stuff. So. So there's some different things here in different ways you could paint these figures and essentially you know the women army core it's like that I'm gonna try to find the one that you know this kind of look here So there's different ways you could have done that figure. You know, I, I did it with an olive drab jacket, but you might have been able to do some of these summer off-duty khaki, light khaki tones as well. Basically, I was trying to go with this look here for that figure, which I think is what they were getting, you know, trying to get at with that. And then you could do for the waves. Like I said, you could have, you could do this one here with the white uniform instead of the dark blue. So that's possible with this kit if you wanted to do that. This is the Marines. I don't think it's going to be too difficult to modify one of the figures to do that. I think it's possible. All right, let's move on to the United Kingdom. The Auxiliary Territorial Services, ATS. That's pretty much what we're going with, with that figure that we have there. Let's see if we can find the RAF. The Navy, which has a very distinct look. And then we have the Air Force here. Again, to other countries like Canada. Yeah. Canada would like that. Anyway, handy book to have. So there are some discrepancies when you look at these uniforms here. You know with their illustrations versus what you just saw in the photographs so it's good to do some research because some of these colors are not quite on the box not quite up to what the real thing looked like uh the raf for example it looks like a very light blue gray here but in that book there it, it's clearly a darker blue color which is why I, I opted to go with with this shade here and i suppose you could have gone darker but I thought that was a reasonable color, which uh, I don't know what color that one was. I think that was just like a regular blue color. Yeah, maybe a royal blue, perhaps. Hey, otherwise, they were like olive drabs and khaki drabs. Those kind of shades, like this is khaki drab. And um, to me, uh, and I had a sea blue, the dark sea blue color, XF-17, is what I ended up using for the uh, the naval uniform for the, um, the wave. Those types of shades there. So again, do some research, and that book in particular is really good at this, to get those uniform colors 
you know, closer to what they actually are. Because if you look at the uh, the wave uniform here, that looks very olive, which is not at all what it is. It's a, like I said, it's a dark blue, dark navy blue. Anyway, um, so that's just a quick look at how this has progressed since building. And again, there wasn't much to, to do as far as assembly on these. Uh, you had to be careful with the legs because it was easy to get them to go every which way. So you need to be careful to get them in a position that was humanly possible, you know, to make them look like they were standing and walking in a normal way. Um, unless you don't want that. But anyhow, uh, I'll probably mount these onto some stands and go from there. Um, I don't know what the percentage of model builders that do this are, you know, what the the numbers are. But as you can see, I tend to like building the figures without a diorama or a plan necessarily in mind. I just see a set of figures. I think that's going to be fun to build. I build it, and then I tend to store them in uh, some of these drawers here. And... Uh, when I get a scene or something in mind, then I'll take them out and think, oh, let's go look and see what I have for figures that would work with that. I think that's probably backwards for what a lot of people do, but um, that's kind of been my way of working because I tend to like the joy of building it, and then I figure out later what I'm going to do with it as opposed to having a plan from the get-go. Uh, as you can see, I've had a, these uh, Italian and Africa core figures sitting over here for many episodes because I enjoyed building them and uh, I haven't really come up with a plan of what I'm going to do with them. Um, just kind of how I function, I guess. And to be honest, I don't do a whole lot of dioramas these days. Uh, they just take a lot of time and I haven't really had the time to really get into something that meaty, shall we say. Uh, but who knows, down the road, we may just do that. All right, so that's... Uh, Finishing up with this kit from Bronco. All right, we'll see you in the next model building workshop. Bye now.